Well, you may have heard over the last little while that Apple have introduced Dolby Atmos to their music playback systems. So today I wanted to chat about what this actually is, how does it work, I'll try and give you a non-nerdy breakdown of how it actually is working in your headphones, and also chat about maybe the impact this could have on the music industry, and whether you as an artist need to worry about it, think about it, adapt to it, uh, where do you kind of stand as a music artist, is this kind of a game changer, or is it situation normal. So we're going to chat about that. I think there are a few impacts uh, which might be helpful to know about. So Dolby Atmos and Apple Music, that's what we're going to talk about today. Hey, I'm Craig from the Dot of Eight Studio and if this is your first time here, we're talking about going from musician to artist. So we cover a bunch of topics that kind of teach us to just go from being a musician to being a recognised artist. So within that we cover branding, uh, playing live, songwriting, recording and promotion. But today we're going to talk about kind of a bit more kind of a broad industry uh, sort of view of Dolby Atmos and is it a game changer? So the way that Apple have been um, promoting this, they've been promoting it quite hard this week, they're very excited about it, is kind of mono to stereo, which happened in the late 60s, was kind of this massive thing where um, instead of sound just coming from one spot, so one speaker, one source, um, it became stereo which just revolutionized everything and it sounds like that's how we've been listening to music then since the 60s. It makes sense. We've got two ears, you've got two speakers, it, it works. But now they've introduced Dolby Atmos and they're kind of advertising it as this is as big a move from mono to stereo is stereo to Atmos. So we're going to have a look at what that actually is, what it's doing and is it is it a game changer? Is it the new norm and, um, and how will all that come in? So we're going to chat about that quickly today. I really like it. So... Um, I think it sounds cool. I, I have Apple Music. When you stick it on Atmos, you can kind of hear a bit more. Is it game changing? I don't know if it is or not. I'm going to show you some audio examples of it in a sec. Um, I've been able to record it into the computer here. So you'll be able to hear exactly what it is if you don't have Apple Music. So something to note is that this isn't a new technology. So Dolby Atmos has been around for quite a while. We've had surround sound in our movies for ages. Um, it's kind of been floating around and Tidal have had it for ages. Amazon Prime Music have had it for ages. So it's not a new concept, but I think with Apple bringing it in, it's kind of commercialized it. And the way that they're pumping it and promoting it just kind of indicates how excited they are about it. And they're really pushing it as the new way, like the way of the future. So it's not new, but it is kind of, it's all of a sudden it's here. So we kind of can't ignore it much anymore. And I want to talk uh, in a second about kind of Spotify and how it's going to maybe react to this. And I think that's the biggest impact on the music industry is that Apple have played such a, a big punch here by releasing this. Um, and I think the way that Spotify respond is actually going to be the impact on the music industry. So we're going to get to that after I kind of explain how it works. But basically, we're not looking at mono and stereo anymore. We're not looking at two speakers. So what Atmos is, is kind of do doing is making... Uh, things spatial. So it's it's called object mixing rather than channel mixing. So normally what I'll do is just stick things in the left channel or the right channel. And if you stick them equally in both, then the sum of that becomes the middle. So what Atmos is doing is kind of making it wherever they want to put it. And the way that works is, I'll try and explain this. If you've got a stereo sound, so you've got two speakers, if I was to make something sound like it's over there, what I'll do is make it louder in that speaker than in that speaker. So if it's not in that speaker at all, it's going to sound like it's on this side of my head, right? You've all experienced that with your headphones. So when you introduce a little bit into that speaker, it just moves it a little bit until you go equal in both and then it's in the middle and then you can pan it to the other way if you want. But what's happening is the sound is still hitting your eardrums at the same time, just at different volumes. So essentially what this Atmos is doing, it's like binaural, uh, binaural recording, essentially. If you haven't heard that, I'm going to put a link above to this kind of cool binaural recording where you actually get a haircut um, and it feels like you're actually getting a haircut if you listen to that with headphones. So what happens is for that, they've got microphones in your ear. So they put microphones in the guy's ear and they, they give him a haircut. So you actually hear what he could hear. Now that's different from stereo, even though it's only two sources, is because instead of just having a volume thing, what you've got is if a sound is coming this way, it's hitting this ear before it hits that ear. So there's actually a time difference because sound takes longer to get to that ear than this ear. 
there's also a lot more reflections on this side. So you've got, um, it's going straight into this ear, but then this ear, it's kind of around the face. They might be a bit muffled because your head's in the way. You might be getting some reflections off that wall. So the sound you actually hear is different to the sound that you're hearing on this side. So in a stereo mix, the sound doesn't change from left to right ear, it's just a volume difference. So with this, you're kind of looking at a time difference and a frequency sort of difference to make it really feel like it's on that side of you, like we experience in real life. So the idea of this Dolby Atmos thing is that you can now position objects wherever. So if you want the violin to be over there, the bass player to be over there, the drum kit to be back there, because of this sort of way that it's hitting your eardrums through these two speakers, you actually do feel like those things are in those different parts of the room. So it's very, very tricky. And basically what it means, I think um, I read, instead of just two channels, they've now got 20, 128 different objects they can put into a mix. Um, is kind of where the Dolby Atmos software is at at the moment, which is just insane. So as far as a, a mix point, it's going to be very tricky to learn, uh, relearn mixing to, to go to Atmos. So that's kind of how it feels. And I think it's going to take a while for for all music to be really, really good like this because it's such a different concept. So I think a lot of the recordings now are kind of older recordings and they've adapted them to be Dolby Atmos rather than recording them to be Dolby Atmos. So the technicalities of how to actually make it sound like this ear hears it in real time compared to this ear, I haven't really looked into because uh, I don't think they're recording everything binaurally. Um, they may be. I don't know. I think it's a mixed technique. It's something to do with the software. So they've obviously figured out some sort of algorithm that does that. And then reproducing that just means that it goes to headphones. So it's pretty cool. And what I've got here, I might show you is um, I've got Nora Jones. So reading up, this was one of the, the best sounding Dolby Atmos mixes at the moment on Apple. Um, it's, what's the song called? Don't know why. Don't know why. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this little bit here in stereo and then I'm going to go straight to Atmos and you really be able to hear the difference. The thing that punches out to me the most is the bass, that it's a double bass. All of a sudden you can feel that double bass. Um, yeah, so they've, they've advertised this as immersive and I think this is a really good kind of way to hear that. So this is the little intro bit in stereo. You and now in Atmos. Do that again, back to stereo, and this time I won't talk in between. I'll just go straight to the Atmos. I think that's a pretty big difference, and it sounds, it sounds cool. It's like it's more spacious, it's less harsh because it, because it has that space. Uh, let's have a listen to this little vocal bit at the end here. So again, this is stereo first, and then Atmos second. So there's definitely a difference there, isn't there? There's definitely like more space and you kind of feel that immersive thing where you are a little bit, uh, I guess, on the stage. That's kind of what they're, they're pitching, that you can feel like you're actually in, in the music. You're immersed by the music rather than just um, an audience to the music. So I think it's, it's awesome. I think it definitely sounds great. Uh, it's, I guess we're yet to see whether it's game changing. Apparently the 3D TV was going to be game changing and you probably can't even buy one anymore. They, they just didn't work. I would say don't rush into this. You don't have to try and find a mix engineer or a studio now that is able to mix in Atmos for your next record because that's where the industry is going. I think for a while, people are still going to listen to music how they've always listened to music, and you're going to have to have a stereo version as well. So there's the early adoption thing where we jump on straight away when we kind of really hope to be one of the first and kind of bank on it working. And then the other extreme is where we, we never do it. You know, we're still listening to vinyls, not because we think they're cool, but because 
we refuse to ever move beyond that. So I want to talk about the impact this is going to have on the music industry. So like I said, this has been around for a while, so it's not a brand new technology. It has been commercialized now. So I think studios are going to start to roll this out. And I think for studios, it's just a massive undertaking. So you need 12 match speakers uh, to mix in Atmos. So we've always used two speakers. I've got a few different sets in here, but you need... Um, like movies have been mixing in 7.1 or um, 5.1 or whatever. So they've got like a movie mix engineer has a lot of speakers at his disposal. So you're looking at uh, your left and right and a center, and then you're looking at two rears, and then you're looking at two spatial rears. So what's that? We're up to seven. Um, then you've got the sub, and then you've got four ceiling speakers, two at the front and two at the back. So you need a 12 speakers um, to make this work. So you're going to be paying a fair bit of money if you want to go to a studio and record your music in Atmos right at the moment. I would, I would suggest just enjoying it, just enjoying the big guys with heaps of money and just uh, it's a great way to experience and enjoy music. Should you early adopt and jump on? I don't think it's going to impact us as independent artists for a while at least. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll take off. Maybe it will just die in a couple of years and, and and not be worth it. We'll see. But I think the greatest impact is that I think Apple have really thrown a big punch uh, in the music industry that Spotify are now going to have to respond to. So I think that's where we really need to worry about this. If we, if you want to worry about it, that would be the biggest worry. Like what is Spotify going to do to now become better than Apple? So along with Dolby Atmos, Apple have released uh, lossless play as well, which means you're no longer looking at compressed MP3 files. You've got full res audio, you don't have to pay any extra for it. So Tidal, again, have been doing this for years, but for Tidal, you're paying between 25 and 30 bucks or something a month to use, to have that lossless audio. That's kind of been their thing. And I looked in, into it for a while and I was pretty close to going, yeah, you know, it's worth it to me. Um, but it wasn't. But now Apple Music at their standard 11.99 or whatever it is, brings in lossless. So I think Spotify are going to have to do something similar um, to kind of match that because potentially people are going to be jumping from Spotify to Apple. If it's the same price, but you get both the spatial audio and lossless audio, why wouldn't you just jump across to Apple? So simply this could just be adding lossless um, to them. I, I'd assume that's going to mean bigger servers and that whole thing. Uh, maybe they've got some things up their sleeve, but what they've been doing with podcasts, which kind of worries me a bit about music is they've been buying up big podcasters exclusively. So I can't even think of any of the names right now, but they've actually gone, you know what, if we will, and they're paying these these uh, podcasters a lot of money to kind of grab them exclusively, which means you can't listen to that on Apple Podcasts or Deezer or wherever you listen to podcasts. The only place you can listen to that popular podcaster is on Spotify. Now, what I'm a bit worried about with this big punch by Apple is what if Spotify's punch is to start buying artists exclusively? Could you imagine if... Uh, if Spotify bought up Ed Sheeran and the only place he could listen to Ed Sheeran was on Spotify, which means he'd be removed from YouTube, Apple Music, everything else because Spotify buy him up. And you can imagine if you were Ed Sheeran and Spotify came to you with that sort of check to do that. Um, it'd be really tough, I think, for artists to go, oh, no, I'll, I'll leave all that money and, and keep it real for the fans. So I don't know, maybe Ed Sheeran would because he's a pretty, he seems like a pretty good bloke, but maybe there'd be plenty of other artists that start going exclusively. And if this sounds really far-fetched to you, what about your movie services? Netflix, Stan, uh, Disney, they're all exclusive. There's only one place you can watch a specific movie and the licensing changes around. So maybe they'll do six months there and six months there. But the thing is with that is that they all want you to have a subscription to them. So I know for us, we've got Disney and Netflix and maybe Stan um, shared with my brother because we want to see movies that are on all of them. It's not good enough to just have one of them. At the moment, for music, it is good enough to have one of them. But if these, got, if these companies are going to start throwing big punches and outdoing each other, I'm a bit scared that maybe exclusivity is going to be the thing that Spotify will do to make people come across to there. So if they can grab a really big artist that everyone likes... Uh, like Ed Sheeran or Taylor Swift or something like that, then a lot of subscribers are going to jump over from Apple to Spotify. Just like now, I think a lot of Spotify people might, if they've got an iPhone, they think, you know what, 
it's cost the same. I'm going to go to Apple. I'm going to get lossless. I'm going to get Dolby Atmos and Spotify are going to lose a ton of money because of this. And I think that's the, that's the danger with this sort of thing. And that's probably, probably more of a, a worry than should I mix in Dolby Atmos? Is this something I need to bring into my music? For that, I would say at this point, no, you don't. I would just wait it out. I would, I would enjoy it. I'd enjoy the big artists doing it. Um, but as far as recording your music, stereo is not about to go out of fashion anytime soon. So you can mix music how it always was and, um, and, and grow a fan base just like you always could. Um, but we do need to be careful of, of what sort of punches these guys are going to do. And I think probably the best way to do this is just not put all your chips in one basket. So if you are like, if your whole career is centered around getting streams on Spotify, if that's your only form of income, that's your, that's your goal, that's your plan. I'm just going to get a couple of million streams on Spotify per month and then I'll be set. The problem with that is something like this happens and all of a sudden Spotify isn't what it used to be and it changes something or they buy Apple, maybe Apple buys someone exclusively and then people jump across and all the people that used to listen to you on Spotify aren't anymore because they're, you know, I don't know what the specific scenario is, but if we're going to put all our chips in one basket that is owned by somebody else, uh, we're really risking everything on what their CEO decides to do because he's not trying to make you rich. He's trying to grow his own business. So if we're putting all our eggs in someone else's basket, um, it's just a very dangerous way to do it. So uh, like we talked about a little bit on this podcast and I'm going to be unpacking a lot more, I think this is a great time to kind of go, all right, make sure my website is really good. Make sure I've got an email list. Make sure I've got a bunch of ways that I actually own like a website or an email list where I can talk to fans, where I can engage with fans and make sure that whatever happens with these big companies, I'm still able to get my music across to the people that uh, enjoy my music because Spotify can take that away from me. YouTube can take that away from me. If YouTube bring in, tighten up their copyright laws like they've been doing, maybe all our covers on YouTube will disappear. And if that's the way that we're connecting with fans, then that's gone. Um, same with, we've noticed that with Facebook and Instagram, if that's where we're driving all our traffic, the algorithm changes. We don't want to be spending 50 bucks a month on advertising anymore. We're not reaching those people. So I think that's the biggest impact that Apple has brought with uh, Dolby Atmos and Lossless. At the moment, for me, it's just great. I'm not paying any extra money and I've got these extra features, with, uh, which I think is really, really good. I've been enjoying just um, zoning out to some Atmos mixes and just to have Lossless, it doesn't make a huge difference to be honest, but um, like it really doesn't. You can, you can barely tell. The MP3 compression is so good. Um, we've been listening to that for years and it just sounds normal. But anyway, if lossless is something that you, you really chase after, you got that now with no extra money at, um, with Apple Music, which is awesome. So we'll see in the coming months um, what Spotify's counter punch is and, um, and how Amazon and Tidal, who have kind of like, this has been their thing that's set them apart from the others. Uh, maybe even haven't, haven't even heard of those, but they've kind of been like your high-end sort of music streaming platform, platforms because they've had these extra features um, and now... Apple does. So it's become very consumer, very commercial and very broad and Spotify will follow suit shortly. I'm sure. Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed my little breakdown of Atmos uh, in Apple music and kind of just a, yeah, just a little demo of how that works. And hopefully it made a bit more sense to you. I did a lot of reading and kind of really struggled to figure out what it was. Um, people weren't being very clear other than just saying it sounded great and it was immersive, they didn't really give a lot of detail of how it's actually working. So I hope I was able to do that for you. So in the comments, let me know what you think of Dolby Atmos. Have you heard it? Uh, what do you think of it? Um, are you excited about it? Do you think this will have any impact on the music industry? I'd just love to hear from you about Dolby Atmos. I just do short episodes every week here on YouTube or on the podcast, if you're listening on the podcast, just about going from musician to artist. So we look at artist branding, playing live, songwriting, recording your music and promotion. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you want to kind of level up as a musician and become a recognized artist and, and earn a bit of money from your music and just do what you really enjoy, do what you're passionate about, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video for me. Uh, that way you can stay up to date with all the new videos. And like I said, I'm doing one every week. So that's really exciting. We'll make some music this week and we will talk again soon.